Hey guys, I just have a short list of mnemonics, which are just memory tools to help you remember the important people in the history of psychology. Um, I know it's just hard to remember who they are and what they like, what their role was, and so I just put together a really um, brief, um, just little tools for each one. Um, some of them are kind of silly, kind of corny, but maybe it'll help you remember. So we'll start with Wilhelm Wundt, and um, Wilhelm Wundt had the first psychological lab laboratory. Um, and so I just remember Wilhelm Wundt because I think of someone with the name Wilhelm Wundt. Sounds like a um, some kind of scientist with all of these chemicals in his laboratory. And so I don't know why the V's and the Wilhelm Wundt sounds very sciencey and a chemist working with chemicals in a laboratory. So maybe if you think of the name like that, Wilhelm Wundt, like this. Uh, I don't know why, but that name just sticks with me, and I have this image of this um, chemist working with chemicals named Wilhelm Wundt. So if that helps you, Wilhelm Wundt, the scientist who studied psychology in the first um, laboratory. Um, William James, he brought psychology to the United States. He's considered the father of American psychology. Um, he also had the first textbook that um, just produced um, written work about psychology. And so I remember that because I think of um, the most widely published book in all of time is the Bible. And I think of the new King James is a version of the Bible. And so James, William James. So if you that helps you remember, he published the first textbook and brought um, psychology to America. If that helps you, that's William James. I think of the new King James version of the Bible, the most you know published book of all time, if that helps you, then hopefully that helps. Um, okay, the next one, Mary Cockins. Um, there's two ladies who have really similar names, Mary and uh, Margaret. And so I think of Mary, Mary's name is shorter than Margaret. Um, so I think Mary comes first, her name is shorter. Uh, Mary came first, She um, so she was the first female president of the APA, whereas Margaret was the second. Um, and so Mary's name is shorter, Margaret's name is longer, Mary comes first, she was the first female APA president. She the she was the first APA president, but also she was denied um, the, the PhD that she worked hard for, whereas Margaret came second, she came later, it was more accepted, she was given um, a PhD and then became, Margaret became the second woman to serve as the APA president. Okay, going down our list, we've got Charles Darwin. I'm so sorry, I cannot think of a mnemonic device for Charles Darwin. Other than Charles Darwin, if you just know he created the theory of evolution, then his ideas led to evolutionary psychology. Dorothea Dix. You can remember Dorothea Dix because Dorothea opened the door, if that helps you. She opened the door to seeing uh, mental illness as an illness and not something that you know you should imprison people for, and so this opened up mental hospital. So Dorothea Dix, Dorothea opened the door to seeing this as, 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 as an illness. So she opened the door to asylums, but closed the doors of the prisons. So she um, brought awareness to mental illness. Um, Sigmund Freud, guys, I cannot think of anything for Sigmund Freud. Um, nothing good, at least. Um, the one thing I thought was really silly, uh, Freud sounds like roids, and if you are on steroids, maybe it causes some confusion and you've got something unconscious in the back of your mind that you don't realize because the roids are just like, uh, you know, they're affecting your mind. So you've got all this stuff in your unconscious and Freud, he was the one who felt like the unconscious mind really um, affected who people were and he created psychoanalysis to try to um, delve into the unconscious. Okay, G. Stanley Hall is our next one on the list. I think G. Stanley Hall sounds like a place on campus. Like there's all, you know, when I went to a university, there were all these places called, you know, such and such hall or hall was the name of all of these places on campus, Memorial Union or Memorial Hall or whatever. I don't know why, but the hall makes me think of they're a location on campus. And so um, if that helps you, G. Stanley Hall, it sounds like a place on campus. Um, he was the first American to earn a PhD. So if you think of he was the first one, it sounds like uh, someplace on campus, G. Stanley Hall. He was the first one to get 
um, a PhD um, in psychology. He later like becomes the very first president of the APA. Um, John B. Watson. The B in his name will help you remember John B. Watson created behaviorism. Okay. Um, Pavlov. Pavlov rhymes with dog, kind of. So <laughs> maybe that's like a slant rhyme or something. I don't know. Pavlov sounds like dogs and he Pavlov's dogs. He was the one who did the experiment with dogs that uncovered classical conditioning. Okay, Piaget. Piaget's name is not spelled the way it sounds. And so if you think of Piaget, he studied how children developed their understanding, like their cognitive development, how they can like solve problems over time as they get older. He just studied how does children's cognitive ability um, grow and increase. And Piaget is something that, you know, if I were to try to explain to my young child how to pronounce Piaget, even though the G does not sound like a G, that would be really hard for my young child to understand. But cognitively, he would get that over time. And that's, that's like a cognitive um, ability that grows that a letter might not look the way it sounds. And so maybe that will help you remember that Jean Piaget, his first name, Jean, does not look the way it sounds. It starts with a J. It looks like Jean. That's a cognitive developmental task to figure out, well, you know, letters don't always sound the way they look. And so maybe that will help you remember Jean Piaget. He developed um, a, a series of stages that show us how children cognitively grow and how their problem solving abilities grow over time. Carl Rogers, he was the one who um, was the humanistic psychologist. Um, Carl Rogers, if you know anything like Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, um, that might help you remember humanistic psychology because humanistic psychology is all on the self and improving the self and um, uh, and that was really about Mr. Rogers. If you watch Mr. Rogers, he was that little jolly guy who sang a little song and um, taught lessons to children about being good and moral kids and all of those things. So Carl Rogers was the humanistic psychology. Mr. Rogers was kind of similar. Okay, um, our last one is B.F. Skinner. And guys, I have a visual for you <laughs> to think of, I guess. B.F. Skinner, um, he worked with pigeons to help understand operant conditioning. He would reward the pigeons and punish the pigeons um, to see how the rewards and punishments affected them. So if you, Skinner, if you think about skinning a pigeon, and that would be a really terrible punishment. So he did not skin pigeons, but Skinner, if you think of skinning a pigeon or plucking a pigeon, that would be a terrible punishment. And so maybe if that helps you remember, he. Um, he focused on rewarding and punishing and seeing how behaviors um, were affected by that. Okay, guys, I think I went all through all of the um, people. Hopefully that those things can help jog your memory when it comes time to the test.